My name is Daniel, and I'm with a company called Turnio that focuses on blockchain specifically, um, but more specifically scalable architecture. Um, so, so if, you know, you got the CIO of JP Morgan Chase, I think it's a really great quote, we'll see greater and wider use of blockchain. In a few years, blockchain will replace the existing technology. Today, it only coexists, okay? Um, the founder, chairman, CEO of FedEx, blockchain has the potential to revolutionize trade across borders with beyond assets. Every single major Fortune 500 company, pretty much, is basically has some initiative. When I talk to different companies, they always they all have blockchain units. They have people specifically focused on innovation and blockchain. And that's because they understand that just like with, let's say, you want to send an email to mom, like, it's pretty simple, right? Hey, mom, I miss you. Send. Well, that was easy. But actually, the technical elements behind all of that is very complicated but it was made easy for you. And we hope that, I believe, blockchain will be very similar to that. So what we're trying to solve, and where we think within the digital advertising um, industry, the issues that can be resolved sort of in the near term or present day are ad fraud, transparency, payment lags, and of course, scalability, which has really been the traditional, has been the real main problem that people talk about. We have a lot of really healthy debates about what can, if it can scale, if it's going to scale, and I, I would say, well, if you don't believe it now, you'll believe it soon. Um, so, you know, one of the things is about reconciliation of data and dollars. Um, blockchain is going to allow for reconciliation of data, and that will lead to the aggregation of those dollars. And that is everything we do is based upon data and data reconciliation. And it's in, in a, as consumers, we don't fully appreciate how many data discrepancies exist, not only within digital advertising, but really many different industries. Okay, so understanding blockchain, but like today, this is not blockchain. You have um, a company, and you have another company, and they're trying to interact and do business, or be a company and a consumer, and they're having to go through the centralized player, right? So in many ways, let's say that's Facebook. Um, the ad, ad, ad agency is over here, uh, or advertiser, and you've got Facebook, and then Facebook tells you, it's like, hey, here's your numbers. Oh, sorry about those numbers being wrong, by the way, later, right? I know we were charging you all those years for these numbers, but um, yeah, we were wrong about that. Sorry about that, but thanks for the money. Um, and then, so that's kind of like the current, the current status quo. And what blockchain is going to do is going to allow for, and I don't think you'll fully appreciate it, but hopefully if I do my job well uh, in explaining it, you will understand it by the end of my presentation, is understand that this really is about completely eliminating intermediaries completely in a way that will hopefully blow your mind, uh, maybe not. But basically, if the agency, let's say that's the agency and let's say that that's the publisher, Right? Now we know it's a complicated programmatic ecosystem that doesn't mean that the DSP doesn't exist. That could be the agency or, or advertiser and it could be the DSP, that could be them and an exchange, that could be them and a publisher. The point is that it is about bringing the relationships together and blockchain is simply the architecture. Now um, all of those are essentially servers and everyone is working off the same set of data. Now, if in fact some of those go away, it doesn't matter because everyone still is working off the same set of data and it's all, it's in many different places. So there's not one specific place that that data exists, it's in many different places and everyone is using the same set of data. Scalability, which is a major conversation within the community. Here's kind of what exists in the ecosystem. You've got Ethereum, which will just be kind and say it's 20 transactions per second. Now, I want you to consider that for a second. Think about how big the trade desk does 10 or 11 million transactions per second on, on their high end, right? I don't know what Google and Facebook do, but it's a lot. The, uh, DVM, a lot of agencies use DVM. They do incredible scale. If you were to try to impl implement an Ethereum-based blockchain product on a transaction-by-transaction -transaction basis, Ethereum is not going to cut it. Neither will Zillico, which is frankly a great scalable blockchain. They're working in Singapore, doing amazing things, open source. Thanks to IBM and uh, Linux Foundation for building that open source platform for Hyperledger. And, and what we've done, and actually was very, uh, I've talked to Ivan from Smarty Ads, we'll be talking, we're talking about this conversation of scalability. I think you'll find that there are many different companies that have actually, I think, have figured out the scalability uh, challenges and how to resolve that. And it comes down to technically, there is no known mathematical limit at this point. We don't know, there will be, but we don't really know what that is. Um, and what that means is, and this is why that's important, because once you can start to address the scalability and like modularly adding in more resources, you add in, it's just a, it's a simple mathematical equation. I want to grow more, I add more servers, right? And if you have an architecture that can handle that, it's just you throw more servers at it. 
Um, and what that means is now you've got transactions per second, but not all transactions per second are equal. Um, you, if you were to deal with a, a line of code that had 10 ones and zeros, because everything is essentially ones and zeros, then that would be, let's say, uh, this way, it, it would weigh this much. But if you had something that had 100,000 ones and zeros, the weight of that would be significantly more burdensome. So you have, on one hand, you have transactions per second, but what blockchain is going to allow for, blockchain isn't going to solve all of your woes. It's not going to cook you breakfast. It's not going to necessarily solve your fraud problems. It's not going to deal with viewability. But what it will do is allow you to layer in additional solutions as like sitting on top of it. And in that way, I think IBM and, and Turnio definitely share the same vision. So if you've got uh, data analytics, here's why that's great. What if now, you have your if moat and IAS and the blockchain company and the app agency and the DSP now are all using the same set of data. The, the account managers I talk to with an agency is for advertisers say they spend 25, 30% of their time just trying to figure out which set of data is accurate. Blockchain is going to completely, if done properly, resolve all of that because the agency itself or the advertiser itself or IAS will all have the same set of data because they're all going to be participating in that in those transactions. You can layer in things like brand safety and viewability. Blockchain itself isn't going to be the viewability solution, but it will work in tandem with your viewability solution, and it will help to solve, once again, I'll talk a little bit more about why that would be useful. Then you can add in things like fraud prevention. Okay, so <clears throat> slapping blockchain on. Now, one of the things that we constantly talk about is, um, uh, from our perspective, it's about an education, People talk about hype, I hope you appreciate that. By the way, that is a Yugo, that's a real Yugo, if you know what that is. Um, and and I'm, you know, we're, we're based at Atlanta, so of course we got a rep Coca-Cola. Um, but, uh, <laughs> so, you know, one of the things you'll typically hear um, within the industry broadly, not necessarily digital advertising, people say, well, you know, it's blockchain. Um, but off-chain really means not blockchain. So you, it's really important to understand, is something with this using blockchain, is it truly on chain all the time, is it really a decentralized blockchain solution, or is it something that at some point has to go through a centralized solution? And here's what that means. So, strictly in rock blockchain. Now, this is what is presently having to be done by um, uh, some participants in the ecosystem because of the technological challenges that exist relative to scalability. So, if you don't have a scalable architecture for blockchain, here's what you're forced into. Okay, now I'm not speaking specifically about any particular company, I'm speaking more broadly. So the agency says, okay, I'm going to pay money to the DSP, then the central, centralized solution now at this point, it's a centralized server, uh, listens in on or takes data maybe three times a day or maybe it's, you know, once an hour, they take these data in, in what is essentially a data dump. Now, that data dump could be Coca-Cola, it could be Pepsi, it could be Nike, it could be all of these different transactions. They layered in all of these 10 billion or 1 billion or how many transactions it's going to be, and they throw it all on one contract. Once an hour, once every five minutes, whatever that is, and then it goes to the, the blockchain. Now the interesting thing about this kind of model is if you cut out blockchain, the system still works great. If you cut out the centralized solution, it does not, it falls apart. And that's kind of where we're in this weird sort of place within the ecosystem because people are trying to get there, but they have the technical challenge of scalability, and so that you have to replace that lack of scalability with a centralized solution. Now, here's what I think is going to happen. You solve scalability, every single one of these impressions is going to be verified through decentralized nodes. Now, the agency, the advertiser, the DSP, the exchange, they can be nodes. Now, what that means is they have their own servers. Okay. You have your server, you have a server, you have a server, right? So everybody's got a server, and the brain safety people are working off the same numbers. Now that's important because once you start to, to address the data discrepancy problem, everyone's working off the same set of data, you can now have pain and reconciliation issues resolved. You can now cut off all of the unnecessary uh, you know, back-end systems that are manual IOs and uh, reporting issues, and just trying to figure out where my money really go. Now, asynchronous payments is something I think what will happen because smart contracts uh, are going to play a major role in this. So if, let's say, for example, um, now the agency or advertiser has the ability to actually start to pay, forget <laughs> IBM or Turnio or any blockchain company, imagine a world where now the agency pays the publisher directly. The agency pays the SSP directly. 
and they're paying them based on that shared set of metrics. Of course, they're going to have to back up fraud and things like that, because blockchain doesn't solve the fraud problem necessarily. There's some things it can do with domain spoofing, but by and large, it's not going to solve your bot problem. It's really just a ledger, right? So now they say, okay, we got our metrics in from Moat or from IAS or Double Verify. We back these numbers out. It's all on the blockchain, and boom, guess what? You just earned a thousand dollars, and now you can pull that thousand dollars. I wanted to just address sort of, you know, it's, we talk about Facebook and we talk about Google and the duopoly, but here's where the industry seems to be headed. It's an interesting industry if you think about it. There's more major companies competing in this space than any other industry if you think. I mean, Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, Facebook, Amazon, Google, IBM, right? Uh, Accenture is huge. And then WPP is not some small player. Right? I mean, they're a huge player, and they don't even seem big compared to the rest of those names. So you're talking about a place where sort of all of the biggest companies that exist in the world are all fighting. And then you look at the international market, and you think about companies like Tencent and Alibaba, because China is, is about to you know, become, it's, it's certainly a huge marketplace, but it isn't even fully involved. So, you know, if you take all those major companies, and that's where you start to see this consolidation. And what's interesting, and not everyone quite understands this, I'll just say that there's like the term super publisher that exists. Here's how it's happening in some places. The publisher signs a contract with the SSP, right? The SSP, and I'm not talking about like an independent SSP, I'm not speaking ill of an ad tech company, I'm talking about a fully vertically, uh, uh, fully vertically integrated company that owns the entire supply chain. So they work with like a Facebook or a Google. So the publisher says, great, I'm going to get 68% of all my money that you, you got from the advertisers. It's great. I get 68% of that. Thank you. The problem is they're really not getting 68% of all the money. They're getting 68% of whatever that company says that particular entity, that subgroup of the broader company made. So now that particular company also owns a DSP, and that DSP has a contract with the agency or advertiser that says, well, we're going to do it for based on total impression, right? We're going to pay you for this impression and get it for this much. So they aren't really particularly focusing on the details. They just kind of know this is what I spent for the whole impression. So now, you said, let's say the agency's playing it down the middle and they're getting their 15%, get a $7 CPM. The agency takes their cut because they got it. They're doing their work. They're working really hard. It's a hard job. Goes to the DSP. That's where it's hidden because the agency isn't charging necessarily. Now, if you go to Media Math and Trade Desk, you have a contract. But if it's with a fully vertical, vertical fully integrated vertical, then you're not charging based on that. So now the DSP plus SSP can make $5 out of that 7 bucks. And guess what? The publisher got a dollar. And then you ask, well, you know what? I don't know why we're not getting very good KPIs. I don't know what's happening because we can't seem to get very good performance and publishers don't really get it because they got 10 ads on their website. Well, maybe it's because A, you're getting paid 90 days later and 120 days later. And maybe it's because B, they're actually not getting very much. So they're not able to produce a good product for you. And because of the lack of transparency, you end up getting shafted. But guess what? There's good news because that company made a kill. One thing, I'll speak about fraud. One of the things that's really going to be tremendous and beneficial, I mean, it was already spoken before about Christiana. Uh, Chad spoke about the challenges of that, that really complicated ecosystem. The interesting thing here is if I told you that there was fraud in this ecosystem, would you be able to identify that today with the existing technology, right? Where the publisher, where, where, did, where was the leak and where was the entry point of fraud? Because it started somewhere. It started here and then it went to some, some supply chain, but you have no way of knowing. With, with blockchain, with tracking the full supply chain, we will actually be able to identify the, the worrisome uh, supply chain. And because of that, you can then, you can really assign a FICO score to each of the participants, and, and you can incentivize and align interest so that uh, if an ad tech company which presently makes a lot of money off fraud, so I'm not saying they're doing it intentionally, I'm just saying there's not aligned interest, but now you can align interest so you say, well, we've identified where this fraud comes from, please cut that out, and you really know where your money is being well spent. And that's it. Oh.